we're going to talk about flow integrals and circulation. Now these are some nice applications of line integrals or path integrals, however you want to call them. Now suppose that F is, say, some velocity field of a fluid and you're moving through some region in space. Now the line integral under this sort of circumstance The line integral, which is essentially just the integral of this over a curve, gives a measure of the fluid's flow along the curve. Now, in the following definition, suppose we have a smooth curve, no breaks or um, cusps or anything like that, and you have a velocity field, F, where all the components are continuous functions. The flow along a curve from one point to another, so the endpoints, is this path or line integral. <coughs> so we may refer to that as the flow integral of F along the curve, say, C. Now, if the curve is a closed loop, like a circle or an ellipse or something like that, then <coughs> this integral is called the circulation of F around the curve. Okay? Now, before we um, actually do a problem here, let me give you a little bit more insight into what's going on here. You've got a smooth curve. And let's say the, you know, we want to integrate from here over to in, in this direction. Okay, so let's just choose a point on the curve. And that might be your F at that particular point. And once I've oriented my curve, I can draw in a unit tangent vector in the forward direction. Okay? So essentially what we're doing here, if I just sort of draw this in, we're integrating this length along the curve, okay, from here to here. So we're integrating with respect to the arc length. Now. What does this mean? And there was a great question in the break about this. If F is almost parallel, so let's, let's say F's actually pointing essentially in the, same, in the same direction as my pen. If F is almost parallel to the unit tangent vector, what does this mean? It means that there's going to be a high flow rate because essentially it's sort of pushing in the same or moving in the same direction. Okay, so you'd expect a positive a large and positive value for the case where F is sticking in the same or pointing in the same direction as my finger. If it was pointing the opposite direction, you get a value that was large and negative. And if it was pointing perpendicular to the unit tangent vector, what do you think the value of the of the, the flow integral would be? Be zero, right, absolutely. Because there's no component pushing in that tangential direction. Okay? So essentially what these things measure is the degree to which the vector field aligns with the tangent vector. Okay? That's essentially what it's measuring. Let's do an example. Now, I've sort of, I think I've no, I haven't done that. Okay. Let's do an example. So you can write this in the IJK notation if you want to. But we're just working in the plane here, in the XY plane. Calculate the circulation of this vector field around the circle with radius A and center 0 in an anti-clockwise direction. So I'm going to draw the, the curve in. OK? 
Okay, so this is my curve C. And what I want to do is C or compute this, the line integral of this F over the curve in the anti-clockwise direction. So to do that, what we're going to do is evaluate a line integral. And for that, we would need a parameterization for the curve C. So how, how do we parameterize a curve C? Well, it's a circle with radius A and center at the origin. So you know, you know that x squared plus y squared equals a squared in this case. We can introduce a parameter t, which just measures the angle to the positive ox axis. And let's introduce this parameterizing function via x equals a cos t, y equals a sine t. Okay, so you can always check that that satisfies the, the circle. And t is going to be, we want one loop here, so t is going to be between 0 and 2 pi. OK, again, you could write this in terms of i's and j's. I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. OK, well, we know that the circulation of our vector field around this curve is just the following. Okay, it's just either that path integral where t hat is the unit vector in the in the forward direction, or you can write it like this. The compact differential form, this compact line integral. But from a computational point of view, this is what you really want. OK, so this is a dt that I've jumped in here. So it's the dot product of f evaluated along the parameterization dotted with the r prime vector, the, the tangent vector to the curve. So essentially what we do is we will work out the tangent vector, work out this, dot them together, and integrate. The a and b would be respectively 0 and 2 pi. OK, so we have the following. Let's differentiate this component-wise with respect to t. So if I differentiate the first component with respect to t, I'll get minus a sine t. And if I differentiate the second component, I'll get a cosine t. All right? And let's evaluate f along our parameterization. OK, so I want to go up here and replace y with a sine t and replace x with a cosine t. OK, so the dot product of these two things is going to be the following. OK, so it's uh, minus a sine t, a cosine t. You can probably see that it's going to simplify very nicely. Okay, so it's, it's, essentially we've got the same vectors here. So I'm going to get a squared sine squared t plus a squared cosine squared t. I can use cos squared plus sine squared equals 1 to give us a squared. Now, so this is a, stra a special situation where that dot, dot product is just a constant. It doesn't depend on t. But in general, you do get t the dependency on t here. So let's actually work everything out. I circulation is just this. So let's integrate this dot product, this a squared, from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, and remember, a squared is a constant, so you can bring it out the front. 
it's just going to be 2 pi a squared. So that then is the answer. Okay, we've got an answer. Well, so what? 2 pi a squared. Big deal. Well, it's positive, right? But I want to go back to comparing these two vectors here. You can see that they are one and the same vector. Okay? So actually, they kind of lie on top of each other. They're parallel. Now, when you work, when you work out the circulation of some vector field over, say, some closed curve, what you're actually doing is measuring how well the vector field and the tangent vectors line up. Here they line up exactly. Okay? So this gives you a strong circulation. If you went the other way, in the opposite direction, they'd be pointing in opposite directions. F and R would be pointing in, uh, F and R dash would be pointing in opposite directions. So you'd get negative 2 pi a squared. So they're, you know, the, there would not be a strong match between the tangent vector and f on that curve. Okay, So that's essentially what, what, what these things measure. They measure the degree to which vector fields and these tangent vectors line up.